are using Photoshop to make three color wheels for the three color systems in use today. The traditional, additive, and subtractive that correspond to three different media. Paint and color pigments in the traditional system. Light is the media and the additive system and ink for the subtractive system. We will be using a numerical naming system for use corresponding to the 360 degree circle or the color wheel. Now the first thing we have to be aware of is that each system depends on the inherent physical properties of the medium being used. Uh, mixing color works differently in each system based on the media and this is why we have three unique sets of primary colors for each of the three systems. In the traditional color wheel for paint and pigments, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So let's start with uh, zero or and we want the saturation and brightness to be at 100%. The color can also be on this end completely at 360, completing that circle. So we're going to start at zero and fill our first large section with the primary color. The second color being used is yellow, and that is at 60. The third primary color is blue at 240 and we want to make sure the saturation and brightness levels are all the way up at 100% for the primary use. The um, second set of colors are used by mixing the two colors on either side, two primary colors together, so red and yellow make orange. So the perfect orange is at 30, halfway between 0 and 60. The perfect green. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting for uh, paint because when we mix blue and yellow paint together we get a color that is green but when we're looking at it digitally see this vivid green here? This color is too bright and it, it doesn't really look like a mix between blue and yellow paint. So what we need to do is reduce the satur I'm sorry, reduce the brightness down a little bit and make a darker value. And what that does, a darker shade of green, it replicates the way the color looks. I mean, it could be a little bit, you know, slightly slightly brighter. It could be at 60, 65, 70. Any of any any oops, not 670. That's that wouldn't work. Any of these colors uh you know, a little bit of black in the mix, about 30%, 40% is going to show what the color looks like when actually physically mixing a little bit of blue paint and a little bit of yellow paint together to make a nice green. Okay, the next color we're going to be going for is a violet, and that color is at 270 on the color wheel, and again at maximum saturation, so we're going to fill that with violet. That would be a mix between blue and red. The next colors that we work on here are called the intermediate colors. They're sometimes referred to as the tertiary or the third colors. So they are also a mix between each color on either side. So halfway between 0 and 30 is the perfect red-orange at 15. The perfect yellow-orange is at 45. And the perfect yellow-green is at 90. Now, um, if you want to add a little bit of black to the mix, that's what reducing the brightness does. We're adding a little bit of black to the mix. That might make it appear to be a mix between this darker, slightly darker green and yellow. And then now we're going to go to the blue-green. This is another a tricky color. So notice that at maximum saturation, this is a cyan color. We do not have cyan in the traditional color wheel. We have blue-green, and so in order to show um, what the color might look like if it were mixed between blue and green, we have to reduce the brightness. It's like produce a shade of, of the color that looks a little bit closer to how the colors might look if they were actually mixed together. So I'm down there at about 60%, and that looks pretty good. Okay, let's uh, go to blue-violet. And that color is at about 255, and the saturation can be all the way up there at maximum because, oops, that's too dark because I didn't put it up to maximum. There we go. Follow my own advice, maximum saturation. That looks like it's halfway between blue and violet, a mix of the two, even equals equal distance. Visually, the eye just kind of feels like it is smooth mix. Now, in the traditional color wheel, we have to go right by magenta and go all the way up to about 330, which is, oops, 330, that is the perfect red-violet, 
with some black in the mix because what we're trying to do is show how the color would look if we mix violet and red together. So that's that's pretty close to what it would look like, a little bit of red, a little bit of violet. I mean, if you pushed it a little bit towards a little bit more towards magenta, uh, you know, that works too. Um, it just needs to be uh, shown with some black in the mix. So somewhere between 300, 330, something like that, we're going to get a good uh, color, but it has to have a reduction in brightness to show that it appears to be a mix between the two colors. All right. So now we've completed our traditional color wheel that replicates the way paint looks when mixed together. Now let's move on to the additive color wheel. The additive color system, uh, the primary use are red, green, and blue. And these are the colors that are in uh, the wavelengths of light. In, in other words, the, the colors are required in order to mix all the other colors. So we combine red, green, and blue in various configurations and we can produce all the other colors in the color wheel. So the next color is green at 120 and the final color blue at 240. Oops, wrong place. It goes right here in the primary spot. Okay, so the second set of colors, the secondary use, are cyan, magenta, and yellow. So cyan is at 180, and cyan is between blue and green. So a mix of blue and green produces cyan when mixing light. It's a very different uh, appearance than mixing blue and green in the traditional color wheel. And you notice the distance. The, the placement on the color wheels is very specific to the system. So each system, you have to really know where the primary and secondary colors go. So the second uh, secondary color that we're going to mix here is magenta. And that is at 300 on the color uh, H number. H stands for U, 300. That's the numerical naming system for magenta, H300. Okay, and the, and the third uh, secondary color is yellow, and that is at 60. And there we have our primary and secondary colors for the additive color system. And again, we're going to go through and make uh, the intermediary colors. 30 is the perfect orange, halfway between 0 and 60. Halfway between 60 and 120, 90 makes yellow-green. Halfway between 120 and 180 is 150, and that is U number 150, cyan green. Halfway between 180 and 240 is 210, and that makes our perfect cyan blue. And the next color will be a, a violet, or we could call it a blue magenta if we wanted to. That's at 270, halfway between 240 and 300, and that's the perfect violet. And halfway between uh, U number 300 magenta and 0 or 360 is 330, and this makes the perfect red magenta. So notice the colors have a different appearance between each uh, the traditional and the additive color wheel. Now when we get into the third system, the subtractive system, we're using printing inks. and the primary colors for uh, this system are cyan, magenta, and yellow. And cyan is at 180, and the colors at 100% saturation. Cyan, magenta at 300, and yellow at 60 makes the perfect trio of primary colors for the subtractive color wheel. And these are the inks that you would find in your home printer. Okay, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So the properties, notice that the secondary colors of the additive system are the primary colors of the subtractive system. And conversely, the primary colors that we have here in this additive color wheel are going to be the, the secondary colors in this second system. So the next color we're going to be going for is blue at 240, and that is halfway between the cyan and the magenta. The next Secondary color will be red, and that is at 0 or 360, halfway between magenta and yellow, because when you mix those two colors together using ink, you get red. And, you know, so it's completely different in each system. And then the color between, a mix between yellow and blue 
produces green at 120. I'm sorry, cyan blue, I should say, cyan. It's, sometimes I call, we, people call it blue. It's technically cyan and this is blue. So a mix of, of yellow and cyan produces this kind of maximum saturated, maximum bright green. Okay, the next uh, intermediary colors are the same as in these. So, you know, you can either use your color picker and transfer them or use the numerical system and uh, do it as part of just remembering how these colors work. Okay, and the next one between 240 and 300 is 270. That gets us to the violet. 330 is magenta red. 30 is orange and 90 makes the perfect yellow green and 150 makes the perfect cyan green. So there we have it. Now to complete our assignment we need to use the center circles to represent what happens when mixing colors together. Okay, So in the traditional color wheel when we mix red, blue, red, yellow, and blue paint together we essentially get black. It may be at more of a murky, kind of mucky gray, murky gray color, but we use black to represent that the color actually subtracts down or is canceled out. That's why it mixes to a muddy black. In using the additive color system, uh, you know, for monitors and screens where light is the medium, red, blue, and green light wavelengths are the colors that actually produce um, all the other colors. But when mixed together, Combined, these three wavelengths of light produce white light, and therefore we use white for the center to show what happens when mixing these three colors together using light. When mixing cyan, magenta, and yellow ink together, this, the color also is a subtractive color system. It separates, the, the color subtracts out. So when combining them, the color subtracts down to a murky black, uh, it may be a little bit more gray, and therefore we add black to the mix. Therefore, uh, CMYK system means cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, because we have to add a little bit of black to our ink in order to produce more uh, rich, deeper tones for printing purposes. And as you now know, each system depends on the inherent physical properties of the medium being used for each of the three systems.